From Houston and Minute Maid Park, welcome to Baseball Night in America as the New York Yankees come to town in a packed house. Biggest crowd of the season last night and another full house expected tonight. The Yankees and the Astros, the middle game of this three game series. I always say welcome inside. Hope you're having a great weekend, Joe Davis and Tom Verducci. This is a big weekend, big trip for the New York Yankees, and tonight a big start for Garrett Cole. It is, and let me cut to the chase. The Yankees are not going to the postseason the way Garrett Cole has thrown the baseball in his last six starts. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about MLB's crackdown on sticky substances and spin rates, but look at the bottom line. Home runs allowed. His fastball command has been the problem. You said it, Joe. It's a big game. The Yankees have a chance to win a second straight road series going into the All-Star break and a chance to get their ace right. So the Yankees are trying to hang on. They took two of three from Seattle earlier this week. They took the opener last night for nothing. For the Astros, they're in first place by a pretty wide margin. This is a good matchup tonight. It's Cole for the Yankees. It's Zach Greinke for the Astros. So many things impressive about Greinke, but here's my favorite. He's 37 years old, and he leads the league in innings pitched. And if Cole is your prototypical power pitcher, Greinke will give the Yankees one of the best changeups in all of baseball. Cole against Granke, the two winningest pitchers over the last five years. Fire against ice. Can't wait for this matchup. All right, the Yankees and the Astros, the middle game of this three-game series, all set to go on Baseball Night in America. This Tuesday, see Shohei Otani, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Vlad Guerrero Jr. as the game's biggest stars travel to Denver for the All-Star Game on Fox. But first, some of the game's best will battle it out on Baseball Night in America. The Astros were built for 2017. Altuve has just sent the Astros to the World Series! Astros beat the Yankees in seven in 2017. They beat them in six in 2019, dominating in this ballpark. And in this trip this weekend, the Yankees first to Houston since the sign stealing scheme was unearthed. And uh, some giveaways this weekend to put salt in the wound a little bit from Astros and the Astros fans giving away a replica championship trophy last night, replica championship ring today, and an Altuve jersey tomorrow. <laughs> the Astros Just a fans. coincidence, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, right. Let's take a look at Aaron Boone's lineup here for game two. DJ LeMay, who has started to heat things up. Aaron Judge, an all star again with Luke Voigt hitting third. Stanton Torres and Urshela through the heart of the lineup. Gardner's in center. He had the tie breaking double last night. Nagashioka does the catching per usual for Garrett Cole. And then Tim Locastro, just acquired from Arizona last week is in left and here is Zach Granke we just talked about a moment ago and you know quietly you hear all about all about Houston's offense but quietly Tom they've got the number one starting staff in terms of ERA in the league yeah, and they take the ball deep into games especially Zach Granke we look at the scouting report on Zach they have to be ready at all counts for his changeup. it is one of the best in the baseball no extra base hits that's right no extra base hits allowed on it and he likes to put the ball on the ground and it's a good thing because he's like another infielder after he releases the ball. One of the best defending pitchers in the game. Six time gold glover in his 18th big league season now. As DJ LeMahieu climbs in and we get set to go with game two of this weekend series. Final weekend of the first half. Astros 54 and 35 with a four and a half game lead over the Oakland days in the West. The Yankees in late May were a half game back but have gone 17 and 23 over their last 40 games. Trying to gather some momentum going into the break. They've won four of their last five. And now off we go with game two and a fastball strike from Granke. Who faced these Yankees in early May at Yankee Stadium. He gave up three runs over four innings. Uncharacteristically inefficient in that game. Is on to LeMahieu is low ball one and it was Alex Bregman who pointed this out to me that LeMahieu has seen Zach Ranke more than any other pitcher but Clayton Kershaw and you mentioned that last game it was the first time he walked DJ in 61 plate appearances 
That is ripped to short and caught by Robel Garcia. Off a bounce, he'll throw him out. One gone. No Carlos Correa? No problem. <laughs> yeah, that deserves a smile. No Correa is short. Still no Bregman at third. Out since mid-June with a quad injury. So the Mayhew the first out of the night. And up comes Aaron Judge. Who against Granke is 0 for 9 with six strikeouts lifetime. Yeah, and the pitch that has really bothered Judge is the changeup, which Zach almost always throws arm side, so inside to righties. Starts him with a breaking ball. That curveball he'll throw anywhere from 60 miles an hour to 75. Yeah, we've seen him get under 70 miles an hour with that curveball. That's the changeup I'm talking about. It's just remarkable how he does not miss his spot with that pitch. The Granky not getting nearly as many swings and misses as usual. Strikeouts are down, but one of the lowest hard hit rates in the game. It's a bounce at a third. Abraham Toro with a running throw to get Judge two up and two down. A lot of weak contact and a lot of contact on the ground for Granky. Yeah, and you'll see only probably a three mile an hour difference between that changeup and the fastball. A lot of times we talk about great separation and velocity getting hitters off balance but for him he wants the change up to look like his fastball until the very end the movement is short and late. Here's one of the keys for the Yankees Luke Voigt who missed the first 40 games this season following knee surgery at the end of spring training. Came back for 12 games got hurt again he injured his oblique. But hitting around 300 in the 15 games since coming back from that. And that includes a series in Seattle this week where he went 7 for 12. Reigning home run champ in the American League. Pops it foul and it's 1 and 1. Let's take a look at the defense for the Astros. You saw a couple of the guys plugging holes on the left side of the infield early. Brantley Straw and Tucker, the outfield for Dusty Baker. Toro and Garcia the left side. Altuve is at second with Gurriel at first and one of the best defensive catchers in the league in Martin Maldonado. Yep. Granky's 1 1. Spins in there, strike two. You could see Luke Voigt trying to make himself wait. He's got the high leg kick. So this pitch is especially effective against pit hitters who do have that leg kick. The one two. Turn it up to 90. <laughs> you can hear Zach grunt. <laughs> so that's about his best bullet at 90. Especially coming following up the 71 mile an hour curveball. They get his 19th start of the season here tonight. Astros are 13 and 5 when Granke takes the ball. Here in his third season with the team, over at the deadline in 2019. Change up taken, and the count goes full. Yeah, that was a good instance of how many pitches Zach has. You saw him shake four times to a catcher in Maldonado, who's been behind the plate for 40 previous games with Zach on the mound. It's not because they're not on the same page. It's because he has a lot of options. The payoff pitch. Voigt swings and misses. And Zach Granke works a 1-2-3 first. So Granke puts up a zero. Here comes Garrett Cole when you come back. Where he went 35-10 and 10 over two seasons and was top five in Cy Young Award voting both years. Fifth in the American League with a 2-9-1 ERA so far in 2021. The lineup that he'll see tonight looks like this. Jose Altuve to lead things off for Dusty Baker. And then it'll be Michael Brantley. Yuli Gurriel out of the three spot with Jordan Alvarez playing in his 162nd career game last night. Kyle Tucker out of the five spot. Then Toro and Straw. Martin Maldonado hits eighth and Robel Garcia rounds it out at shortstop. Cole saw these Astros in May. Gave up two runs over seven innings in a no decision. All-star against all-star to open the bottom of the first inning. 
He attacks the first pitch, drives it down the line foul. You'll see that a lot tonight. You'll see that a lot anytime Garrett Cole's on the mound. Yeah, I had that down as my number one item on the scouting report on Cole. First impressions because hitters get up there. You don't want to get deep into account on Garrett Cole with his arsenal of pitches. So they'll go up hunting fastballs early. And the fastball command, as I mentioned at the top, not been good lately. And first impressions, we already checked off that one on the list. The other is command performance. The fastball command, especially if he can get his fastball to his glove side, away to righties, into lefties, has not been able to do that. Puts this one in the corner, pop up right side of the infield for Luke Voigt. And the first out. Four-time All-Star in his ninth big league season, five years in Pittsburgh, then two years in Houston where he went 35 and 10. He was an All-Star both years. Top five in Cy Young Award voting both seasons. Runner-up to Justin Verlander in 2019. And pitch well in the postseason for him before signing the record contract for a pitcher. Nine years, 324 million prior to last year. 30 years old out of Orange, California. Home to Michael Brantley. And Brantley goes after the first pitch, flies it to left. Tim Lo Castro, two up and two down. Well, Houston's a team that likes to swing early in counts. They don't concede early count fastballs. Garrett Cole knows that. That's why there's more of a premium on command and placing those fastballs in the right spot. Retires the first two, now faces Yuli Guriel. Yeah, the Astros shut out last night, for just the second time this season. And you go back to their final game against Oakland on Thursday, just one run over the last 20 innings for lineup. It's a little bit depleted right now. Been without Bregman since mid June. And they're without Carlos Correa for the second night in a row. He's on the health and safety protocols list. Esther Cortez, four and two thirds shutout innings in last night's game. That's inside, and it's two and one on Guriel. Overall, though, this Astros lineup, when it's right, is a machine. Five and a half runs per game. I like the word that Chris Bassett, the Oakland pitcher, used. When they're at full strength, this lineup is disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's what the kids are calling it these days. Sick. Three and one. Well, you mentioned it's depleted, Joe, and I think as you're looking at overall, I think it's the best offense in the game, but without the two guys on the left side, it's not quite the same. And also lately, Altuve and Brantley both struggling. Right. And even Gurriel a little bit, who's had his best season overall, has been quite right the last couple weeks. A 3-2 from Cole. Swats it the other way, foul. Guriel, 37 years old, having his best season. Not just 37 and having his best season, but doing it after his worst season. And he said last year he put pressure on himself and that it was the final year of his deal. He wasn't in great shape, but got much better shape this offseason. He actually signed an extension prior to the end of last year. He's been a monster for him. He is the best two strike hitter in baseball. Getting tested right here by Cole. On a 3 2 again, sliders lifted foul up and down this lineup. Good two strike hitters. Yeah, they, they really do put the ball in play. I think that what makes them a potentially really tough postseason team. There you go. That's an amazing average. You see the major league average. So he is more than 100 points above the two strike average in the big leagues. They've got two of the top three. They've got four of the top eight when you add in Jordan Alvarez, and a two strike average. He's followed off a couple two strike pitches. Now waits on another. Strike three call with a slider to the corner to finish off a one, two, three first for Cole. To the second we go. No score on baseball night in America. Today's telecast is sponsored by Lincoln. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Back at Minute Maid Park, no score as we go to the second inning. Frankie and Cole both one, two, three, first. 
Stanton Torres and Urshela coming up for the Yankees in the second as Granke comes downhill and just misses ball one. Stanton homered against Zach Granke back in May and has homered against him three times in his career. Two and up. Stan, who's having a solid season for the Yankees, watches the slider for a strike two and one. Of course, the whole thing with him has been just being on the field. Yeah, he's missed a couple weeks with an injury back in May, but around that has performed pretty well. And ever since then, he's really been almost exclusively as a DH. You don't want to risk putting him out there in the outfield. Ahead here, three and one. Stanton hit 38 home runs in his first season with the Yankees 2018 but then played just 41 games over the next two seasons a variety of injuries. Former MVP takes a lead off walk. First base runner of the game against Granke and we check in with Ken Rosenthal. Joe, Brent Strom is 72 years old, but he says Zach Greinke in all his years as a pitching coach is by far the most fun to watch pitch. He loves the way Greinke's mind works, the way he thinks through sequences, his creativity, and he draws two comparisons. Phil Mickelson, the golfer, because of Greinke's ability to improvise, his ability to pull things out of nowhere, and Greg Maddox because of his understanding of the difference between 85 and 88, the way those two pitches play. Watching Greinke, Strom says, is like watching a chess match in an era of drag races in baseball. Yeah, the debuted when he was 20, back right. in 2004. I believe the Torres fouls off the first pitch, and he has evolved multiple times throughout his 18 years in the majors. I love those comparisons, by the That's way, great, from Kenny, because he's an excellent athlete, so I know he's a really good golfer. Maybe not quite as good as Phil, but really good. And I love the Maddox comparison as well. I'm going to tell you quickly about a story about how he warms up before the game. Most pitchers will warm up about 20 minutes before the game. He gets out there maybe 25. For the first five minutes before he does anything, he goes on the bullpen mount and he pantomimes his delivery. Five full minutes of the version of shadow boxing equivalent of his delivery, and he's doing it from the stretch position, locking that in, the release point, the timing. And it takes me back to Greg Maddox, who used to always throw bullpen sessions, throwing more pitches out of the stretch than the windup. Most pitchers do the opposite. And I remember asking Greg once why he did that. He said, think about it. When do you have to make your most important pitches of the game out of the stretch? That's why it needs more attention. Only Justin Verlander among active pitchers has won more games than Zach Grant. It's sitting at 216 for his career. And he falls behind Torres 3 and 1 after the walk to Stanton. We'll talk about him being a good athlete, childhood tennis star, who was then a star high school shortstop. So good that he, for a while, thought that he was going to be a pro as a position player. But he didn't pitch full time until his senior year of high school. Delivers 3 1. Torres hits a fly ball to left center field. Brantley's going back on it, shy of the warning track with room to put Torres away for the first down. The Fox Fed Super 6 app is giving you a chance to win Big Poppy's money during tonight's Yankees Astros game. You can enter anytime before the start of the seventh inning of this game and answer six questions about the seventh, eighth, and ninth for a chance to win $1,000. To scan the QR code now to download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and enter for free. One on one out, here's Gio Urshela, who since the start of June has started to resemble the Urshela from his first two years in a Yankees uniform. When he went from a guy they got for nothing to a replacement for Miguel and Duhar, where they thought, okay, we're going to upgrade the defense in this case while they replace him with the injury, but we'll take what we can get offensively. But no, he's turned into a really good offensive player. No! 2 0. Especially on balls inside, Gio 
love to turn on anything in. And you see Zach Granke right now. This is kind of typical of Zach early in the game. He's working around the edges of the strike zone. He's not missing by much, trying to see how much chase he can get, trying to see how many calls he can get. Ouch, got a chunk of Maldonado there. Maldonado with that one knee. Stance have become very common in the game, and that got him on the knee. Standing at first with one gone. Granky home 2 1. Dirt for ball three. You know, you mentioned Zach's athleticism. Jason Castro, the Astros catcher, and I, I preface this by saying there's nobody like Shohei Itani, but he thought Zach Granky has the athletic ability. To be a two way player. Wow. You know, those days are past, obviously, but in his National League days, he showed off his skills in the batter's box. Two time Silver Slugger. He's hit nine home runs in his career. That's a base hit to left. First of the game for the Yankees comes from Gio Urshela. The Yankees offense that produced 12 hits in last night's game has its first today. We've seen a lot of curveballs early from Zach and that one was left up in the zone. See the target. And watch where the ball is. You folks at home, when you watch a game, I know we all like to watch the ball in the pitcher's hand, but if you watch the catcher's glove, you'll get a good idea of how sharp the pitcher is. The more the catcher has to move from target to receiving the baseball, the more the pitcher's off his game. Frank, he's gone to a three ball count, all three hitters in this inning. And now it's Brett Gardner, whose first hit of the month of July last night was a two run double on the 4 0 Yankees win. 37 years old in his 14th year, and it seems like we're having the same conversation each of the last few seasons about him. Okay, they're going to bring him back on a one year deal, provide depth and leadership, and by midseason, it's more than that. This year, he's become an everyday player with the injury, most primarily to Aaron Hicks. Yeah, we didn't really know how important Aaron Hicks was to the construction of this team until he was out. Outside. Gives him a few things they now lack, right? I and mean, he's a switch hitter, so he gives him a left handed bat, a center fielder, and some semblance of speed and athleticism. Yeah, I, I know the Yankees will tell you that right handed hitters are good right handed hitters who hit right handed pitching, but it makes it too easy on the opposing manager late in the game by having just a, a run of right handed hitters. Hicks would break up that string. That's a fly ball in the short left field for Michael Brantley. And Gardner is out number two. The MLB.TV All Star Sale is here for $49.99. Watch all out of market regular season games live or on demand, plus MLB beginning. Blackout or other restrictions apply. The sale ends July 12th. Go to MLB.TV for details. Two on two out and the eight hitter Kyle Higashioka who is at this point pretty much the personal catcher to Garrett Cole. He'd become more than that about a month into the season with Gary Sanchez struggling Higashioka off to a great start pretty much became a timeshare. But Sanchez got hot again. Higashioka came back to earth and at this point his starts pretty much exclusively on Cole start days. He yeah. continues to fall behind. Yeah, and I give credit to Aaron Boone and Marcus Timms, the hitting coach. They weren't really giving up on Gary Sanchez, but he needed to address some things with his setup in the box, specifically the big leg kick that he had. You just can't make that change overnight, so he backed off playing time for Sanchez to work through the adjustment, and it really paid off. And I know lately the hits have not been there, but his approach still is much better than what it was. Agashioka hits this one way up there, but. Got under it and in center field Miles Straw will put it away. The Yankees strand a pair middle two no score in Houston. Uh, 
Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez gets ready to lead off the bottom of the second time for above and beyond. Sponsored by Jersey Mike's. Played in his 162nd career game last night. 44 home runs, 138 RBIs. Third highest OPS in big league history through 162 games. Pretty remarkable what the 24 year old out of Cuba has done over the first now full season of his career when you put it all together. Eric Cole delivers the first pitch of the second. Backdoor with a slider for strike one. This guy doesn't get talked about enough in my no. book. 162 games, 44 home runs, 138 RBIs. By the way, only one other player mm -hmm. has done that in baseball history. Those numbers in the first 162. The other was Rudy York. It was a long time ago. We're talking about back in the black and white picture days. <laughs> Detroit Tiger chases here one ball two strikes you're the only two guys with OPS is higher than Alvarez through 162 game York and Ted Williams yeah his OPS built a lot on walks on a one two pitch that's way outside ball two yeah I was really curious to see how Garrett would approach him here because back at Bay Jordan got him twice for home runs. The only player with two home runs in a game off Garrett in the last four years, and they were both pitches in, and he got him out on a fastball away. He's trying to go in right here. With a 2-2 pitch, and he paints the inside corner with a fastball. His second strikeout. That is so important, that pitch. I told you, if he can command the fastball to glove side, then you know he's on his game, because then that opens up everything else. He's had a problem getting the ball in to lefties away from righties, and that was just picture perfect. Again, look at the target. Higashioka doesn't have to move it. In the pass, he might miss across the plate or all the way in. Picture perfect execution right there. One gone second inning, no scores. Kyle Tucker comes up for the Astros and takes ball one. I know Garrett talked about his bullpen session in between starts here. He worked a lot on working all four quadrants of the zone with the fastball. And again, the command has been the biggest problem for Garrett Cole. He knows it. He's made some mechanical changes. And I also noticed he's moved on the rubber as well. And I think that has helped his command. Two starts ago, if you watched him in Boston when the Red Sox teed off on misplaced fastballs, he started in the same spot, but his right foot would plant dead center rubber. Now he'll slide that right foot over to the first base side. That's what you have to do as a pitcher. You got two feet of rubber to work with there. You don't have to be in the same spot all the time. And suddenly he's down 3 0 to Tucker, who has quietly. Been one of the best hitters in the American League the last two months. Three balls, one strike on Tucker, who got off to a slow start just in the overall numbers, but he was still crushing the ball. You talk about bad luck. First month of this season for Kyle Tucker was exactly that. But top five in the American League and average ended on base plus slugging in the two months since. Even as he missed some time with a stomach bug, caused him to lose 10 pounds. Lay it in a fastball here, and the count goes full. Well, this pitch will tell you a lot about how Garrett feels about his fastball right now. Could go fastball or slider. Fastball to get him swinging. 99 to the outside edge. He's got a great ability to find another gear with two strikes. Very similar to Aroldis Chapman. Cruising speed, 97. Put away speed, 99, 100. Three straight strikeouts for Cole, who's retired the first five. And 138 strikeouts on the season to lead the American League. Abraham Toro watches a first pitch slider bend in there for a strike. Toro is starting for Bregman, who's pretty much at third every day at this point. Bregman out since mid June. He thinks he's getting closer and closer to a rehab stint. 
A pop fly back of the infield. Torres with the call. And the catch to finish off another 1 2 3 inning for Garrett Cole. No score in Houston. 9 1 and 2 coming up for the Yankees. That means Aaron Judge after this. Tomorrow, All-Star Week begins with the Sirius XM All-Star Futures game on MLB Network. And Tuesday, don't miss the All-Star Red Carpet Show, also on MLB Network, leading up to the 2021 MLB All-Star Game, presented by MasterCard at 7 Eastern on Fox. Let's strike one on Tim Locastro, who's three for his first 11 for the Yankees after they acquired him from the Diamondbacks last week. Giving them some more outfield depth and giving them some speed. Yanks one down the line to left. It's hooking. Foul. You know, I had to laugh watching Zach Franke huh? before this at bat. <laughs> you know, Kenny gave us that report about how smart he is. As you see, this ball just had too much hooking action. Side spin makes the ball hook like that. And, and as LeCastro walked in the box, Granke turned to Abraham Toro, the third baseman, and said, watch for the bunt. Mm -hmm. Usually that's something the coaches do in the dugout. Mm -hmm. Zach is a coach on the field on the mound. You see how he holds the baseball there with the change up grip. He'll re grip to any other pitch in the glove. Bounces run in there one and two, and uh, he is right. And tell him Tor to watch out for this guy. Not just adding some speed, but adding the second fastest player in baseball in terms of average sprint speed. And Tim Castro, who's Cleats are in the Hall of Fame for setting a record for going 29 for his first 29 in stolen base attempts. That was with the Dodgers as a pinch runner, then with the Arizona Diamondbacks. How about this? He goes 29 for his first 29. And then when he gets thrown out for the first time, he dislocates his finger and misses two weeks on the IL. Yeah, that's a tough way for a streak to end on the IL. But yeah, I mean, he gives the Yankees some athleticism and base running acumen they need. Shoots one up the middle. Backhand Altuve from short center field. Jose Altuve. How in the world does he get LaCastro with all that speed? The transfer. Look how quickly he gets rid of this baseball. It's a great play just to get rid of the ball, but I want you to watch the transfer. He's still moving towards the outfield as he turns and somehow gets enough on this baseball to get one of the fastest runners in the game. Real speed. I think Castro might have been surprised mm -hmm. that Altuve was playing him there that even had a chance at the ball. One gone third inning. Strike one on DJ LeMahieu. All right, those first steps out of the box look like I got myself a knock. Yeah, that was not fastest player in baseball speed for the first, I don't know, 30 feet. Yeah, it might have cost him. LeMahieu grounded a short his first time. He's behind 0 and 2. Mayhew trying to extend a 25 game on base streak. Second longest active streak in the sport. And only J.D. Martinez of the Red Sox with a longer streak. And he's finally started to look like the D.J. LeMahieu from his first two seasons with the Yankees. 327 average was second in the American League in 2019. 364 last year led the majors. On a 1-2 from Granke, he fouls it off, will do it again. Bit of a slow start this year. First of a six year contract. But the average during that on base streak, Tom, 317, very DJ LeMahieu like. There you go. As you speak, there are the numbers, and you know he's on his game when he's taking fastballs to right field, off speed to the pole side. You can throw him a fastball in, and he'll still hit it to right field. Let's the ball get deep.
2 2 to LeMahieu. Perfectly thrown to get him. Second strikeout for Zach Granke, who faces Aaron Judge again. You talked about it. He has owned him throughout his career. Yeah, and mostly pitches down in the zone, especially a changeup. Changeup and sliders down. Judge is a great high fastball hitter. That's the one high fastball he threw him. But he has not made mistakes with these pitches. These all look like strikes to Judge, and he got him first time up doing the same thing. The change up down that Judge rolled over on. That's been a hole for 10. Lifetime against Zach Granke. Not too many pitchers who can say they have held Aaron Judge to that. Judge got his 500th career hit last night. On this 1 0. Takes a strike. Lone All Star position player for the Yankees this year. On 1 1, takes ball two. And even as disappointing as the Yankees' offense has been as a whole, really shockingly disappointing, Aaron Judge has been what you expect Aaron Judge would be. 20 home runs, average near 300. He hits one in the air to deep left center field. Forget about this one. Home run number 21. Way gone for Judge, and the Yankees lead 1 0. His first hit against Granke is a no doubter. And it goes to show you the thin margin of error. The one time he left the pitch up. Look at the target. Watch the pitch. High, high. Judge is not going to miss that one. So the Yankees draw first blood and a home run from Aaron Judge. Luke Voigt. Strike one. Well, we talked about the changeup from Zach Greinke. It's the first extra base hit he's allowed off the changeup since last September. A Mookie Betts home run at Dodger Stadium. Changeup taken low, and it's 1 1 on Voigt. It's really remarkable when you think about throwing that pitch as often as Zach had has more than 400 consecutive changeups, no home runs, no extra base hits. No! Hit and then he finally gives one up, and go figure, it comes to the guy that hasn't been able to touch him. He, won. And he made the mistake to the wrong guy. He's not going to get away with that mistake to a guy like Aaron Judge. Facing another powerful hitter here in Voigt on 2-1. Two and two. Well, the Yankees not quite the home run hitting powerhouse they've been in years past, although they're still top five in the American League in that regard. Your know, one quirk, though, is that almost 70% of the home runs they hit are solo shots, like that one from Judge. That's by far the largest chunk of their home runs being solo shots of any team in baseball. It's got to be a quirk, yeah, right? Now you can't explain that. Figure it's going to even out in the second half of the season. Hey guys, tonight when we hit our homers, <laughs> just make sure there's guys on base when you do it. Ready, break. 2 2. Outside. Good take. A looping curveball. Runs the count full. Three, two. Yeah, you see how this curveball he is featuring, especially against the hitters on the Yankee lineup with the higher leg kick, like Boyd. And a fastball missed his spot, but found the inside corner for strike three to end the top of the third inning. Aaron Judge with a solo shot to open the scoring on Baseball Night in America.
Eric Cole whips in strike one to Miles Straw as we go to the bottom of the third inning. The Yankees in front one nothing on a long home run from Aaron Judge. We're joined by their manager now, Aaron Boone. Aaron, we didn't see up here. Where did you have a look at where that ball landed? I thought it went up over the uh, Minute Maid sign uh, on the train tracks is what I had, but I did not just because of the light shining through the windows a little tough to follow. Well, how much fun is it, him, is it to watch him on an everyday basis? It's great. He's he's such a I mean, obviously, he's an amazing player, but he's he's just an awesome competitor, a great teammate and, and someone you want to go at it with every single day. And uh, he's, he's been so steady for us this year and um, you know, good to see him get us off to a good start today. Well, we have a great vantage point, and we couldn't see where it landed, so <laughs> he got all of that. I want to ask you about Garrett Cole, and specifically, Aaron, we talked before the game about fastball command. First impressions in this game of what he's been doing, especially with the fastball. Yeah, I think he looks really good. Um, and and he's, he's already mixed everything in. I, I feel like he's flashed a good couple of good breaking balls, the slider to freeze Gurriel. Um, he's, he's already mixed in the changeup. And a couple three, two counts that he's had, he's made pitches, whether it was to Gurriel um, and, and they, to, to get Tucker last inning. So uh, I feel like he's pretty sharp so far and off to a good start. No one to Maldonado is fouled into the glove 0 and 2. I mean, he's always competitive. We know that, Aaron. But did you get a sense coming into the start that there was a little extra motivation, focus, use whatever word you want for this start? No, I, I always feel like he has something. There's there's times when he's got a little extra edge to him and a little extra, you know, energy. There's times when he's a little more, you know, quiet and really locked in. But you know, one thing he's he's always very prepared between starts, and and he there's always you know some kind of an edge and it may look a little bit different every day when he when he does start Aaron appreciate the time all right guys one ball two strikes on Maldonado who gets time as Cole has retired the first seven ahead of the Astros catcher one ball two strikes another example one of those fastballs I mean the 10 home runs he allowed Joe in that six start stretch many were just middle middle pitches and you look at the metrics on his pitches in this stretch actually the slider has been terrific the curveball has been good change up coming along it's fastball mistakes in the middle of the zone that have really haunted him and today as he mentioned in his bullpen sessions working the pitches in the quadrants of the zone out of the middle another one two and another strikeout is fourth of the game look you can't ignore the timing and the degree of his slide right from a sub two ERA to a plus five ERA all beginning with his start on the day that the league issued the memo announcing the coming foreign substance crackdown. But you also can't ignore how good he looks tonight. There's no question. This is a period of adjustment that many and I mean many pitchers have gone through. He pitched maybe for years using substances to get a better grip on the baseball. And to improve spin, now all of a sudden it goes away. Okay, it doesn't mean you still are not going to be a great pitcher. I still believe the great pitchers will be great, but in a different way. Robel Garcia flies on the left center field, routine for Tim Lo Castro. And Garrett Cole, perfect once through the order against his old squad. Sponsored by Allstate. Here, better protection costs a whole lot less. And by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. MLB and T-Mobile are bringing an all-new Derby experience to fans with the MLB AR app. This augmented reality app provides unprecedented 3D views and ball tracking for the T-Mobile Home Run Derby. Download today at MLB.com slash AR. Ball one on Giancarlo Stan. I, I'm going to have to get that app. We'll watch Otani in the home run derby in Denver. Can't wait Let's for that go. show. <laughs> How about the ball he hit last night? 463 feet. Stan with a chopper to short. Robel Garcia for the first out of the fourth. I mean, 33 home runs. He's on a 61 home run pace. He's a two time All Star in one season as a hitter and as a pitcher. It's hard not to watch him and talk about him and read about him without a big smile on your face. I'm just so fascinated. 
There's so many ways you can measure the wonder of Shohei Otani. And how about this one? He hits the ball this year harder than Mike Trout. He throws his fastball harder than you Darvish and he's faster than Randy Orozarena. He leads the major leagues in home runs and he leads the league in bun hits. And he has the toughest pitch to hit in baseball by batting average, the splitter. Torres left side, that'll get through. He's on his way to second. Brantley's throw is not in time and Glaber Torres into scoring position. Out in front of the breaking pitch and just hooks this through the hole. And once it's deflected, then he realizes I can get to second base. Misses one glove, clanks off another. And he knows he's got a single right there. Once he sees the ball off the glove, it's a good read to take second base. Third hit of this series for Glaber Torres. It's a double. He's at second for Gio Urshela, who chases the first one from Granke. Urshela, one of the best hitters on the first pitch of the at bat in baseball, but he comes up empty there. This is a spot where the Yankees pretty consistently this year have fallen short. Third worst team in the majors with runners in scoring position. Started to hit their home runs again, but bad in these situations bad as a base running team typically it's shocking looking at the overall offensive output for this Yankees club four runs per game for a team that perennially is at the very top of the majors better than five per game they've been a little better in their approach at the plate a couple of good takes there by Urshela now last night, for example, they had nine singles, and Jake Odorizzi of the Astros threw a ton of splitters because he saw how controlled their approach was on fastballs. And they were letting him get deep, hitting base hits the right field. They had that approach really as a team in the Seattle series, so getting better. This is where you have to think a little smaller, runner on second. Fly ball lifted to the right field corner for Tucker. Makes the catch. Torres headed for third. Two out. Did you ever see an outfielder shade his eyes? Indoors. Indoors? <laughs> you just saw it right there. Love this place. The one by the spot way. in the ballpark where the sun actually was a factor. This place is beautiful. It is loud. It's unique. And yeah, shading your eyes indoors. The Yankees now 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. That's why you got to change your eyes. <laughs> you don't think about bringing the sunglasses out to the outfield indoors. Maybe today. Here's Gardner. Started the scoring for the Yankees last night with a two run double. Slide the left his first time tonight. Take strike one and a curve at 70. And he's starting a lot of hitters and Gardner twice with that get me over curveball. Very rarely does a hitter pull the trigger on the first pitch curveball that slow. Gardner is patient as they come. Takes another at 67 this time, but away ball one. He can go slower. Mm -hmm. We've seen him go slower with the EFAS. Two and one on Gardner. Today it's ranged from 67 to 91. Two one. It's gone as low as 60 with what has been charted as a curved ball, even lower than that with the EFAS that you mentioned. He's only thrown a couple of those this year, but that's a couple more than anybody else. Torres at third, two gone. Two one to Gardner. His stroke to left. Right at Brantley to end the inning. 
middle four here in Houston. Top of the order for the Astros, looking for their first base runner against Garrett Cole. It's Altuve to lead it off. Both pitchers exceptional so far. One nothing game, bottom of the fourth. Chat with Zach Granke, Dusty Baker has been. And they're stirring down in the Astros bullpen as the pitching coach Brent Strom comes over as well. Nothing against Garrett Cole through three innings, second time through the lineup. Jose Altuve watches ball one. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the mound, but clearly you see Javier up in the bullpen. You know, there's something not quite right that would cause the bullpen to get up at this point in the game. Just went down the tunnel. Brent Strom right behind him. One ball, one strike on El Tuve. All right, I heard you. Yeah, we'll play umpire shouting over there at the first base <laughs> dugout, and I don't need and to tell heard you what too. he said. Yeah. <laughs> Two and one on El Tuve. Popped out his first time. And now ball three. El Tuve's season really took off. Against the Yankees after the Astros had dropped the first two games of the series in the Bronx. Altuve had heard jeers and heckling all series long and then hit a game winning home run off Chad Green in the eighth. He's taken off from that point. Takes a strike and the count goes full. That was just his second home run of the season more than a month into the year. He's got 18 from that point moving forward which is top five in the league. Yeah, it's almost as if he jump started the team along with himself. Astros were 15 and 15 at that point. Good indication of how good Garrett's stuff was right there. 3 1 slider dropped in for a strike. Now 3 2. Comes back and just misses with a slider, and the Astros have their first base runner. Comes on an L2 day walk. We check him with Ken. Well guys there is no question Garrett Cole is going through a transition with the crackdown on foreign substances. Yankees pitching coach Matt Blake said yesterday that yeah he's got to find new ways to grip the baseball. But I go back to something Garrett Richards of the Red Sox last night. Now he's had a very difficult transition as we've seen. And he said just what Tom was mentioning in the previous inning. That good pitchers are going to find a way to be successful. Now the crackdown in my opinion had to happen. It was out of control. The relationship between the pitcher and hitter was imbalanced. But again, Garrett Cole, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball before, and he might be one of the best pitchers still. It will just be different. Yeah, I think, Kenny, what's different is you're not going to see those super spin fastballs at the top of the zone at 28, 2900 RPMs. But you know what 2500 is good enough you know, to still get pop ups if not swings and misses but right now Garrett is struggling with the baseball. You know he threw one out. He's trying to use rosin and the sweat from his hair back of his head to get a better grip on the baseball but he saw a little bit of disgust there. I missed with those two uh, last slider to Altuve. Again making the transition at some point though baseball will have to address how to make these balls a little more tackier. 3 and 0 on Michael Brantley. And that is the focus right now. The Athletic had a piece yesterday diving into that. More so than on coming up with a new ball, it is coming up with a new league-wide tacky substance. And there's the history of his four-seam spin. When he got to Houston, he became a different pitcher. Had been more of a two-seam guy in Pittsburgh. You see the spin rate went up and now it's back down since the crackdown. 3-0. Four pitch walk to Brantley. Back to back walks to open this fourth. And I was talking to Brent Strom about this issue that hasn't gone away in terms of are the baseballs tacky enough. And what he did was he he talked about the baseballs are rubbed up 24 hours before the game and a lot of times they dry out from the mud so it's not as tacky as they should be. 
as they visit with Cole. A quick word from T-Mobile. This year, Major League Baseball is bringing you the T-Mobile Home Run Derby like you've never seen it before. Experience it now at MLB.com slash AR or head to your app store. So in the course of a game, you might see 150 baseballs put into play. Think about the poor guy who has to come up all the baseballs, right? It's manual labor. But if they sit in a ball bucket for 24 hours, and especially if you're talking about baseballs used towards the end of the game, the mud tends to dry out and the balls become slick. And that's one of the things that the league has learned through the testing that it's done on the baseball so far this year is that there's inconsistency in the mud, both in the mud itself and in its application from person to person, different timing. And they are working on a substance, a uniform substance, to give pitchers that grip that they need. And hopefully by next year, they've settled on something. Astros with something brewing here. First and second for Guriel. Cole trying to find it. He's missed with eight of his ten pitches in this fourth. And misses badly here, 1-0. Oh. Garrett Cole had an 11 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio in April and May. Since the start of June, it's 3 to 1. And you're saying here why is the fastball command. Now he's starting to spray that pitch. We didn't see that in the first three. There's a strike with a slider. One ball, one strike. He tries to get another grip from a rosin here. And so Guriel is a hitter you want to attack with fastballs. He is a terrific breaking ball hitter. Two on, nobody out, fourth inning. Cole lets the 1-1 one, one fly. And a fastball puts him ahead one and two. This is executed well. Again, he's working that that side of the plate better with the fastball. But typically you would see Garrett go upstairs here with the fastball. Fastball right by him at 99 for the first out of the fourth. I mean, you're not kidding when you said it was by him. I'm not sure whether Guriel was sitting on slider here, but this ball is by him before the bat gets to the zone. And again, we saw one, another case of Garrett Cole finding that extra gear with two strikes. Talked about Guriel, such a good breaking ball hitter. Garrett found the command of the fastball for those last two pitches. Good strikeout total. One gone for Jordan Alvarez. We mentioned the first time he came up. Homer twice against Cole back in early May. Those are two of the four hardest hit balls against Cole all year. First one it is fouled off. Took a rip at 99. <laughs> power against power. That was a two strike fastball on an 0 count. That's what it draws when you got this man up there. Rookie of the year 2019 unanimous. And then limited to just two games last year. Ongoing knee issues. He had surgery on both. The lower half feeling right. First time in a long time. And Alvarez having an exceptional season. And an 0 1 from Garrett Cole. It takes ball one. It's amazing that he's just turned 24, isn't it? Because it's yeah. not just the power. I mean, the, the discipline, the high on base, it's a complete package as a hitter. And I asked Dusty Baker who he reminded him of, and I've had the same thought as well when I see that number on the back and the way he fills the batter's box and has a nice, easy stroke that gives tremendous power. Willie McCovey. <laughs> Hit sharply to second. They get it out there, and they turn a double play. 4-6-3, LeMahieu, Torres, and over to Voigt. And four shutout innings for Garrett Cole. Anticipated. Zach Granke leaves the game after four innings, hands it off to Christian Javier, who's moved to the bullpen in order to 
limit his innings. 24 year old in his second big league season on for the fifth. Yeah and he's really a good matchup for Houston against this right handed heavy New York lineup really wipe out slider is his best pitch He's done a great job out of the bullpen for Dusty Baker. So they lose Granke the American League leader in innings pitched averages better than six innings per game. And look good it was interesting to see him have those conversations and then walk up the tunnel with the pitching coach. Outside. They turn it over to the bullpen and Javier misses with his first one to the catcher at Gashioka. Eight nine and one for the Yankees here in the fifth. Astros bullpen is remember the clearest spot and you could see them going to improve the trade deadline. Ryan Presley has been great at the back end and collectively they've been better lately but if you're looking at one phase over the year that's not been as good this is it. Yeah but I agree they have been much better lately and Javier is sort of learning how to be a relief pitcher you see him working out of the full wind up. I mean in his best days I think he still winds up in the rotation. But in terms of his workload, days of rest, that's those are the things you have to learn to do. And the Astros learning along with him the right way to leverage a really good arm out of the bullpen. Houston's minor league pitcher of the year in 2019, debuted last year. There's 2 1 to Higashioka, misses by the hands, ball three. Higashioka flied to center his first time. Part of being a relief pitcher is when that phone rings in the fourth inning and Granky on the mound, you weren't expecting it. Get yeah. yourself ready quickly. A leadoff walk for Gashioka. I'm out. Well, tomorrow, All Star Week begins with a Sirius XM All Star Futures game on MLB Network. On Monday, don't miss the T Mobile Home Run Derby on ESPN, all leading up to the 2021 MLB All Star game presented by MasterCard Tuesday at 7 Eastern on Fox. There are some young stars headed to Colorado. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. What a uh, what an MVP race we're going to have in the American League between Guerrero going for the Triple Crown, Otani doing what he's doing, and Fernando Tatis Jr. Otherworldly for the Padres. Nine hitter Tim Lo Castro shows blunt, stabs at it, strike one. You don't see that a lot from the New York Yankees. No, sacrifice blunt in the middle of innings of a game. <laughs> I don't mind it though, especially with his speed. And it really forces a defense to field everything cleanly here. Field the ball, step and throw, make a good throw. He puts pressure on the defense, even with a bunt. Swings away this time, rolled it to short. They get an out at second. That's it. With the Castro speed, he's on with the fielder's choice. I don't think he took a direct line to first base. <laughs> He's running on the grass to get there. But he got there in time. Let's see how quick he is. This ball is fielded flawlessly by Houston. It's a quick turn by Altuve. Castro just too fast. And now we'll see if he picks a pitch to run on here. LeMay, he was 0 for 2. After collecting two hits last night, drive it in a pair. First one gone. Javier will check on it. Again, the Castro is the man we mentioned last time he was up. Went 29 for his first 29 as a big leaguer. Stolen base attempts. Yet to attempt his first as a Yankee. I like this spot for him to run. I'd like to see him run early in the count as well. Not a great move by Javier so far. Especially. The way Javier likes to throw that slider, it's a good pitch to run on. Joe, I just think that's a big reason why they got LeCastro and use that tool that he has. Fastball to the top of the zone for a strike.
packed house here in Houston. About 40,000 last night, somewhere in that neighborhood again tonight. No balls, two strikes. They have been revved up. A rematch of 2017 2019 American League Championship Series. If you're used in here, you can't call the high fastball. Essentially, would be a glorified pitch out, similar to the first pitch thrown by Javier. But so far, I haven't seen a great move and not that quick to the plate. Fastball sticks with it and strikes out LeMahieu. Two gone in the fifth. It brings up Aaron Judge, whose home run is the difference in this game. Let's flash back to 2019. Altuve's walk-off home run against Chapman. Covering up that jersey like that. Okay, so Judge hits his home run. Watch Aaron Judge coming around third. Here the Yankees return to the scene of the crime. And the Astros were cleared of cheating in 2019 by Major League Baseball, but plenty of suspicions across the sport. The Yankees hold suspicions about what might have happened in 2019 as well. That's in the dirt ball one on Judge. There were discussions among Yankees fans and across the sport. Was he doing that? Was Altuve doing that because he was wearing a buzzer? That's something that, again, Major League Baseball and its investigation cleared the Astros of. We check in with Ken Rosenthal. Well, our initial report in The Athletic about the sign stealing dealt only with 17 and 18. We did not find anything with 19. As you said, Joe, Major League Baseball did not either. There was a lot of talk about the interview I did with Altuve after that home run, whether I knew he was doing something, and is that why I asked him the question? I did not know. In fact, our producer, Pete Macheska, had to tell me he had done that because it was kind of chaotic down in the field. And, of course, Altuve at the time just said, ah, his wife didn't like his tattoos, whatever. But, again, the most important point, nothing has ever been proven about 19. But for how the Yankees feel about it still just look at Judge's move coming around third on his home run. And remember Aaron Judge in 2017 lost out on the MVP to Jose Altuve in a year where the Astros were. Well I'm sure Judge will be, be asked cheating. about it after the game and I'm sure he will not shy away from it. But there's only one way right now to read that body language. That is a comment on Altuve's home run. Pennant winning home run in 2019. And you can go back to last year comments from Aaron Judge when we really first found out the details of the cheating scandal in Houston. Aaron Judge said I had a lot of respect for them the way they played and what they did and then to find out it wasn't earned they cheated that didn't sit well with me. I think he made another statement today. His home run the difference in this game behind Javier one and two. It's important to remember too that Altuve denied any kind of signal buzzer device anything like that as Ken mentioned. He did not want to reveal a, a tattoo that was in the progress of being acquired. And he did take a slider before the home run hit on a slider. Did he go? You bet he did. Judge retired. The Yankees done in the fifth. Halfway home in Houston. One nothing Yankees. Judge home run and four no hit innings from Garrett Cole. Walked a pair last inning, but used a double play ball to get out of the jam. So here we go to the bottom of the fifth with Kyle Tucker leading things off for the Astros. Swinging to the first pitch, lofting it to center. One pitch, one out. In our first game break of the day to Kevin Burkhardt in Los Angeles. Kevin tomorrow will be the rubber match in that series. The A's will try to snap a six series winless streak. As Houston has opened up a four game lead in the division. One ball one strike on Abraham Toro. And the Astros started this season as you mentioned earlier Tom 15 and 15. 
after they had lost the first two games in the Bronx but beginning with that win in game three best record in the majors at 39 and 20 a little jam shot into center field for the first hit of the game for Houston and it comes from Abraham Toro and they made a really good pitch and the first hit is off the barrel with parachutes in the center field. You can't believe it. He's made so many good pitches. Yeah. He made another one. Just unlucky. But I'm really impressed with the mix of his pitches, Joe. And, you know, him and Igashioka are working so well. After that first out, first pitch curveball that Tucker popped up the center field, Garrett kind of pointed at Higashioka and said, thank you. First pitch fastball hitter is Kyle Tucker. One pitch, one out. These two work very well together. Here's a 1-0 to Miles Straw. Framed well, one ball, one strike. I mean, that is just paint. We started out talking about Ken Garrett command his fastball to the glove side. There's no doubt that he is today. One on one out. Here's the one one pitch from Cole. After a long pause, Joss misses ball two. Part of the adjustment Garrett Cole is making. Crackdown is an order enforced here. Seeing more four seam fastballs down for a guy who had one of the best four seam fastballs up. So I think that combo will play very well. The slider working off that four seamer on that side of the plate down. And the slider. Even during this downturn in the overall numbers for Cole, the sliders remain really good. Opponents hitting 077 against it since the beginning of the crackdown. Yeah, and the spin rate is down on it, 170 right. something RPMs, but the results have been really good. That's a 2 1 fly. 2 and 2. Back in the ballpark where he's 20 and 4 lifetime. Rosette, of course, coming in his two seasons with the Astros. They played a video a tribute to him last night. He got a good hand when they played that on the video board. But when they announced him as part of the lineups today, it was a very loud reaction. There were some cheers, but what? 70% angry boos? It was pretty boos. strong boos. I mean, yeah. last night was fine. He wasn't pitching. So you give him a courtesy, welcome back, Garrett, cheer. <laughs> Trying to beat him today. 2-2. Two -two. Goes up with the fastball this time. Straw fouls it off. Now the ball will be flying Monday night in Denver when eight of baseball's biggest sluggers go head to head in the 2021 T Mobile Home Run Derby at 80 Eastern on ESPN. The ball is always flying with the Home Run Derby. And Do you think it's possible to hit a ball up at that, you know, that purple line they have up there that marks the mile literally line? Literally one mile elevation? That's in right field, isn't That's it? way up there. That's in Otani land. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Got to watch now. There goes Toro on a pop fly down the line. And foul ground void out of room. Well, Toro, not especially a base stealer, but runners are six for six on Garrett Cole this year. He obviously saw something there. He's seen a few pitches at first base. Bad idea. You figure right now the way Garrett Cole is pitching to string three hits together might be very difficult. And the way the offense is going. Just one run for the Astros in their last 24 innings. And none against the Yankees in these two games. Another 2-2. Two -two. Not running this time. Straw fouls it again. How about Miles Straw, Tom? I mean, mm. this is the guy that over the first month of this season 
you could live with him in the lineup because he was okay defensively and it was a lineup full of good offensive players. Well, now he's second in the American League in on-base percentage over the last month. And you're seeing why he's such a tough out. Rarely strikes out. Great opposite field hitter because he doesn't jump out at the baseball. A hitter who knows his swing, his approach, doesn't vary even when he's ahead of the count. He's taken over for George Springer in center field. He's worked the count full. 26 years old, handful of games last few seasons in the majors, and there were calls for Dusty Baker to get rid of him. Come up with a new solution in center field with that slow start, but Dusty said today, no, when there's a guy that you like as much as the Astros have liked him coming up to the system. You don't pull the plug that quickly, really one month into his career as an everyday player. So what we're seeing now from Miles Straw, this is what Dusty Baker hoped and was confident that he would get. Let's see if Dusty starts Toro here. I would not, just because Cole has so many strikeout weapons, and I know if Straw puts the ball in play. He does start him. He chased, but he's going to reach. He gets away from Higashioka. Yeah, obviously, Straw cannot advance to first base. First base occupied. So he is out. I beg your pardon. And the second goes Toro. And he did go to the slider after a real heavy sequence of fastballs. I thought it was set up for the strike him out, throw him out, but obviously in the dirt, tough to handle. And now it's up to Maldonado to see if he can get a base hit. After the sixth strikeout of the game for Cole, Maldonado, who is in the lineup mostly for his defense, with a two out chance to tie this game. So Cole's been almost untouchable this year. Opponents two for 24 against him with runners in scoring position and two out. Rifles in a fastball, strike one. Astros, one of the best teams in baseball with runners in scoring position. Pick an offensive stat, they're probably near the top. Maldonado fouls it back, 0 2. Well, he had a good cut at that one. Cole got melded out of the first time up on a fastball. He's stuck with two of them right here. And then one of the many wonders about Garrett Cole is he's got many put away pitches. Four seamer is his favorite, but the slider as well. We've already seen that tonight. Here's his 0-2. The slider, but not close enough to draw a swing. One and two. Astros getting their first hit of this game. A one out base hit from Toro. He's at second. One ball, two strikes on Maldonado. Thing two and two. I'm telling you, watching Garrett Cole look at these baseballs. Ever go to the grocery store and see like a real finicky shopper working through the produce aisle? Like ah, that's no good. That's no good. That's no good. It's kind of what Garrett Cole is doing with the baseballs tonight. As I mentioned earlier, it seems to be as the game gets later, you're getting the baseballs towards the bottom of the bag. They're a little slicker because they've dried out more. See if he goes back to the fastball because he did not have a good feel for either slider. Turn on, turn on. So Higashioka jump back when the hitter calls time like that. A lot of times the hitter can look back and find the location of the catcher, and he was set up away. So you got to make sure as soon as time is called, you're not giving away pitch location. Jump back to the middle. And if you think the hitter did see you, you may have to go to a different pitch. 
Cole's 2 2. Punched on the ground is second for DJ LeMahieu. And the Astros unable to take advantage of their first hit tonight. The Yankees won, the Astros nothing. Back to Houston on Baseball Night in America after this. I'll be in home runs. Well, I'll play the role of Siri. Shohei Otani, 33, leading the majors in home runs. Tatis leading the National League at 28. Christian Javier pours in a strike to last year's home run champion Luke Voigt. It's a home run that's accounted for the scoring in this game. Judge back in the third. Voigt over two with a pair of K's. He cracks one the other way. Base hit beating the shift and that is what Luke Voigt has done more of over this recent stretch where he's gotten hot. And it's what he's always done when he's been right using the whole field. Yeah, he's a guy at Yankee Stadium, very dangerous. But here he just gets beat by a fastball. He's not trying to hit the ball outside of the field. He just got beat a little bit. But he's so strong. He's busting that ball through. Point now 8 for 15 on this road trip. The board to lead off this inning against Christian Javier. On in relief of Zach Granke. who left the game after four innings. First one to Giancarlo Stanton. I'm out. Javier, somebody obviously who can give him some length. He's shortened his outings lately, but began the season as a starter. Had a couple seven inning outings. Two and up. Well, his fastball is playing up a little bit tonight. Typically, he's right around 93 with the fastball. I haven't seen the same sharp tilt on the slider yet. It's been a little more sweepy. Got this heater by Stanton, 2 and 1. Victoria, Dominican Republic, small town in the outskirts of the capital, Santa Domingo. Delivers a 2 1. And gets another swing and a miss on a high fastball. It's a case of being stubborn in the good sense. He hadn't shown you he can get on top of this fastball. He threw three in a row. And you know, that's what happens with Stanton. It's an unusual hitter. Strikes him out, sticking with a fastball. Yeah, because Stanton can look really bad. I mean, as a major league hitter, he can sometimes miss by a lot and make an adjustment the very next pitch. But in this case, he didn't make an adjustment throughout the at-bat to Javier's fastball. Third strikeout already for Christian Javier, and one and a third. One-nothing game, sixth inning. Here comes Glaber Torres. The hustle double his last time. Takes ball one. Torres 62 home runs over his first two seasons in the majors. An all-star both years. Six over the last two seasons. Granted, that's a shortened season last year. It's only half a season this year. But anyway, you slice it, the power's completely disappeared. It's mystifying, other than the fact. That 19, he hit 14 home runs off breaking pitches and changeups. And he has zero in the last two years. No home runs. There you go. There's his overall numbers. You see the big drop in the OPS basically coming all from the lack of slug. And just complete nothing in terms of home runs on anything spinning or off speed. And he does have some issues. With his setup and big leg kick, he tends to work underneath the baseball like that. You know, last night he had a couple of hits off fastballs where I thought his posture was better, a little more upright. But watch this swing. He works underneath the baseball, working up underneath and then up. You're not going to get that pitch. You see the backside almost collapsing. You see a lot of those swings, especially off, should be a slider right here. 
He got him stuck with the fastball. He's loving that right now. He is. I'm telling you, the fastball is playing up today, and they're sticking with it. Michael Torres, that has been the biggest hole. His fastball's up. Seeing a bunch of them from Christian Javier. Out of it, first one gone, and a 2 2 pitch coming. Another fastball. This one was lower. Punch towards the right field corner. Tucker over to make the catch. Torres is out number two. Yeah, you call it, Joe. That pitch was lower after really getting fastballs by him upstairs. Gave him a chance to get to that one. This is what I like about catching, Joe. It, it, you go in with a game plan, scouting reports, but Maldonado has to be reading swings throughout the game. So no matter what was discussed two hours ago, he's seeing both Stanton and Torres having trouble being on time to Javier's fastball. So that's what you stick with. Shallow with two out. Martin Maldonado is turned into a leader for this club. 11th big league season, second stint with the Astros. Played in 40 games for him in 2018. Then they got him again at the deadline in 2019. He has already signed a deal for next year. So the starting staff, in a lot of ways, exceeding expectations, even with all the injuries they've dealt with. All them out of the common thread there. Boyd at first with two gone. Let off this inning with a single. As Urshela takes ball two. Pitchers love throwing to Maldonado. He's very good at framing pitches. What pitcher doesn't love that? Turn balls into strikes and make sure the strikes stay strikes, but it's also his game calling. And you hear pitchers talk about being able to feel the confidence of their catchers. He exudes it. You can tell that he believes in his pitchers. That's a great point. I've noticed that also from someone like Christian Vasquez. When they give a sign, they give it with conviction. Mm -hmm. Just the body language. Here, Javier has just been following his lead every pitch, no shakes. Got even two and two. Now that's a good swing on a fastball. Now that would make me as a catcher think I need to go somewhere else. That wasn't like the swings we saw from Torres and Stanton. Well, let's see on a 2 2. He goes with the slider. It's off the end of the bat. Short right center field. Tucker's there. And that's that for the Yankees in the six. 9 1 and 2 for the Astros coming up in the bottom of the inning. Garcia, Altuve, and Michael Brantley after this break. Cole has shut him out through five tonight on just one hit as the nine hitter Obel Garcia takes strike one. Garcia Altuve Brantley for the Astros. Number one offense in baseball this season overall, but and into some issues in the last couple of days. Just one run scored in their last 25 innings. Astros haven't been shut out in back to back games, Tom, since May 1st and 2nd, 2018. Was also against the Yankees. Hmm. Well, again, with Correa out these last two games, and Bregman obviously still out, it's not quite the usual juggernaut we're accustomed to seeing this year from Houston. Tuve making a fan's day. The 1 1 from Cole slides in there, 1 and 2. Garcia's story. It's a guy who's played for five different organizations in the last 12 months. And three years ago, he was playing in Italy. Get a chance to start in short again. Carlos Correa unavailable again. He was playing with an Italian team in Arizona in spring training against the Reds and a Cub Scout. And then Gabe Zappin saw him there and thought twice about should I really put in a report on a guy who's in his mid 20s playing in Italy. Chase is here strike three on a change up from Garrett Cole. Well, he 
Tiger's got everything working now, huh? I haven't seen too many of those, maybe a handful tonight, but to the number nine hitter and perfectly executed. It's pitch that he's been throwing more than ever this season. Use it for a seven strikeout of the game. Well, here we go, Tom, back to the top of the order. Astros get in their third look at Cole. Well, this to me always the pivot point in most games. The sixth inning, lineup turns around a third time. Pinpoint. I see no drop off in Cole's stuff. And the fact that he has four pitches working, I don't think makes him easier to solve a third time. Tuve was the first base runner against him with a walk in the fourth. And typically he does get stronger as the game goes on. That's more than just cliche. The velocity actually does go up as he gets deeper in games. Fires a 1 1. Now Tuve watches wow. ball two. Mm. Yeah, it's really, you talk about someone finding an extra gear. We mentioned he does that on two strike counts, but he does it as he gets deeper into a game. That is just so impressive in any era, but especially this one. Shakes through a few signs from Higashioka. Comes home with this. It's a breaking ball tap foul, and it's two and two. Good battle right here. Seen changeup, seen fastball, seen slider. You see Garrett taking his time. He knows this is a critical part in the game. He's handled the bottom of the order fairly easily. And he knows getting through these top of the lineup hitters, Brantley behind Altuve. Game on the line right here. 2 2 from Cole. Way down and away. Count goes full. Again, he's back in the produce section, Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to right. find the baseball, trying to find the right grip. All these rotten apples and bruised oranges. Get him out of here. This could be triple digits right here to an excellent fastball hitter. All-star to all-star. In a one-nothing game in the sixth inning. Cole rocks and fires 3-2. Altuve smacks it on the ground to second. LeMahieu throws him out. Two gone. We check in again with Kevin Burkhardt for a game break. The first place match. Took two or three from the Yankees last weekend. It's the last team that Garrett Cole faced. Two gone, bases empty. Michael Brantley. Bouncing ball right side. Backhand Voigt feeds Cole, who gets through this critical inning. One, two, three. After six, one nothing, New York. On the free to play Fox Bet Super Six app. One of the questions in tonight's contest is how many different players will pitch in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings? Play along on the app for your chance to win. Give you a little hint. There's nobody up in either bullpen. <laughs> I'd love to ask Aaron Boone that question. That's right. We'll send you 10% of the winnings. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have Chad Green tonight, doesn't have Jonathan Loisega. The world is Chapman has been a work in progress with mechanics. Garrett Cole is starting to look like, yeah. I got this, Aaron. Uh -huh. Strike one on Brent Gardner. Could Cole go the distance? Could we be looking at eight from Cole and Chapman on to try and close out a one run game? One ball, one strike on Gardner. Now you know how to write a script, don't you? Mm. <laughs> when was the last time Chapman pitched in this ballpark? Oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Javier came into this game after four innings from Jack Granke. Two shutout frames from him. One hit, one walk, three Ks. A young right hander out of the Dominican Republic. 
A 1 1 to Brett Gardner. Whistles in there for strike two. He's really leaned on that fastball. Fastball that when he first started pitching when he was 16, he didn't pitch till he was 16, but it was 86. It wasn't very big. Put on some size and that velocity came. Sticks with it and strikes him out. His fourth K. Time for the Hyundai lift to the game. In a pitcher's duel here in Houston. Garrett Cole, six shutout innings. Having a bounce back outing against one of the top offenses in baseball today. Zach Granke was good, giving up just the home run to Aaron Judge through four. Javier has been good as well, following him up. Well, he's had all of his pitches working. Just one wobbly sequence in the fourth inning, back to back walks. He recovered quickly and well. Slider for a strike on Higashioka. Goal, by the way, is at 81 pitches through six. No. What is a really, as we talked about off of the top, very important weekend for the Yankees. They've won four of five. They're now trying to put a stamp on this little run going to the All Star break. Nine back in the division, three and a half back of the second wild card. Outside. Two and one. Yeah, I mean, it's a week, even if you were playing well, you'd kind of circle and say, okay, that's we're going all the way out west to Seattle. That could be trouble. And we're going to Houston. And we know how well Houston plays overall, but especially in this ballpark. They got a chance to win back to back road series heading into the All Star break. And the offense approach, if not the results, has been very good. Agashioka gets on top of it, pulls it to third on a bounce. Toro with a nice play, two gone. Now really, these teams have traded places in terms of uh, the odds Vegas has given them to do big things this season. Coming into the year, the Yankees had the second best odds to win the World Series behind only the Dodgers at five and a half to one. The Astros were given the 12th best odds to win the World Series. Here we are going into the All-Star break. Yankees nine back. The Astros lead in the division by four and a half, and it is flipped. The Yankees now with the 11th best odds. The Astros second to the Dodgers. That is a big change. Shows you what half of a season can do. Part of the Yankees' odds swinging in the wrong direction because they've struggled within their division. So just winning the division, which is goal number one, would be tough. But even the wild card, the depth of the American League and the good teams. No ball, no strikes on the nine hitter, Tim Lo Castro. Fouls it off, and it's one and one. Yankees started the season. Fangraphs gave them a 70% chance to win the division. As the highest of any team in baseball. Not even the Dodgers had that high of a probability of winning the division, obviously, with the Padres being there. Fangraphs now gives them an 8% chance, from 70% to 8% over the first half. I'm surprised it was 70%. I mean, I, I think the Rays going into this season, with all due respect, I mean, they did win the American League pennant last year. And they're a legit team, and I knew they were sitting out a ton of really good prospects that were major league ready. Let's see if he swings here. Yeah, that bat looked like it went through to me. And then the Boston Red Sox, I think, have surprised a lot of people with how good they are this year. And with Chris Sale coming back, hey, they're not going away. Javier turns and fires two on. Strike two on Le Castro, continuing to ride that high fastball. Yeah, might as well throw that again. Got good life on it tonight. Two two.
Javier fires another 2 2 and another foul ball. This one getting the chunk of the plate umpire, Corey Blazer. Mm. I'd like to say I feel your pain, Corey, but I don't. That was hit him squarely. Castro's got a chance at this fastball as long as it's down there. Mm. Now that I was going to want this pitch up. Same with Corey Blazer. <laughs> yeah. Up and into the glove, he's thinking. Javier looking for the first one, two, three inning for Astros pitchers since the first. I think Maldonado is saying throw it up. Hi. That's where he goes and it works. Book and K's on a one, two, three, seven for Christian Javier. We stretch in Houston. Telecast is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, and motorcycle insurance. And by Verizon, 5G built right. Anniversary of Aaron Judge's home run derby win, 2017 in Miami. And it's Aaron Judge home run that is the Yankees ahead 1 0. Joe Davis, Tom Verducci, Ken Rosenthal. Garrett Cole, six shutout innings, just one bloop hit against him. 0 1 to Yuli Guriel, fouled into the glove 0 and 2. This is by far Garrett Cole's best start to this point since May. And you mentioned the home run by Judge, the one mistake Zach Greinke made, first change up for a home run. That's through the left side, leadoff base hit Guriel. Just the fifth hit of this series for the Astros in 49 at bats. You mentioned earlier Guriel, really good breaking ball hitter, especially right on right breaking pitches. And Paul had pretty much handled him with fastballs. And this is the curveball, the knuckle curveball. Not a bad pitch. But watch Guriel stay on it. Good hitting against a good pitch. Here, Cole, who routinely crosses the 100 pitch mark, is at 84. Nobody out in the seventh, and you were down to Alvarez. It took him deep twice in early May. Go for two tonight. Up there representing the go ahead run. Cole's first one is to the back door, lands at the knees, strike one. Two home runs he hit off Cole inside pitches. One fastball, one slider. Cole got him out the first time by going away, similar to that last pitch you just saw. And twice when he tried to come in, which is good hitting. That's not a bad slider right there. And then a fastball, that's the missed location. Didn't want that pitch there. Earlier, one of away. the best two strike hitters in baseball. He's down 0 2 here and watch his strike three as Cole hits 100 for his 8K. I mean, this is just so impressive. We're talking third time around, seventh inning, and you're dotting a fastball with two strikes at 100 miles per hour. I can't even begin to tell you how much work went into having the ability to throw that pitch. A lot of pitchers right now watching this game from the dugout in this situation. He's out there throwing 100. One nothing game in the seventh. Kyle Tucker in the dirt. Good stop to Gashioka. One ball, no strikes. And Joe, I'll tell you, the other thing I've noticed, I talked from the top, that fastball command is the key for Garrett Cole, and especially getting pitches to his glove side. And I mentioned his movement on the rubber. He's actually, as this game has gone on, moved even more to the first base side of the rubber. He has found a spot now where he's able to command the baseball that he wasn't just two starts ago when Boston teed off on fastballs left and middle. See that heel he sets up, whether from the windup or the stretch. 
He's almost going to be on the far end, first base side of the rubber. He had been middle of the rubber. He's digging himself quite a hole there, yeah, too. He is. <laughs> digging himself right at home at his old home. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate. In the form of Kyle Tucker on 2 0. It's a high fly ball into center field for Gardner. Two gone in the seventh. Derek Cole, one game after his shortest start in five years. Give up four runs in three and a third against the Mets on Sunday. Heard booze as he left the mound. One game after that, six and two thirds shutout innings. Just two hits against him. He's at 90 pitches. And ready to face Abraham Toro. Got the first hit against him with a bloop single in the fifth. Off single from Guriel. He's still at first. Toro watches ball one. Astros tonight, Tom, 0 for 6 with men on base. Well, we talked about Cole's ability to execute at a higher level with two strikes, execute at a higher level late in the game, and you mentioned the runners in scoring position number. Just a special pitcher. He's got that extra gear. When he needs to make a pitch tonight, he's been able to make it. And with a variety of pitches, not just the fastball. Ryan Stanek down in the Astros bullpen. Three scoreless innings from Christian Javier to keep him right here. One nothing in the seventh. Very high on Toro, ball two. Four years old at a Montreal. Third year with big league time, getting some extended run here in place of Alex Bregman. On this 2 1, watches it rip through the back door for strike two. I was talking to Alex before the game. He was doing some workouts on the field, live, well, not live BP, but on the field BP. He hopes to be back by the end of this month. He obviously has been out a long time, so he'll need to go to AAA for some rehab games, but. No doubt that they miss that player in this lineup. Side run at first, two gone, and a 2 2 from Garrett Cole. Do it again. Uh, Bregman is as excited for a triple A rehab as any player in baseball history. And why is that, Joe? <laughs> it's in his hometown. <laughs> they have a road trip in Albuquerque. He said, I can go see mom and dad. That's convenient. Ah. He's talking to me about how the, all the work he's been putting in to keep his legs healthier. Nutritionist, trainers, he's had a lot of lower body injuries the last two years. Another 2 2. Popped out of his hand. Count goes full. Now the tying run gets a head start from first. You know, time to get some more rosin, get better grip because that came out like a wet bar of soap. And Miles Straw coming in from the on deck circle pointing something out to Corey Blazer as if something has fallen onto the warning track or. Looks yeah, like something it. fell from the stands onto the warning track. It's a a glove. glove. Wow. Ah. Nice. That's not an easy throw. That's way up there. And he got it to the guy that dropped it. All right. Three balls, two strikes on Abraham Toro with a tying run at first base and two gone in the cell. There he goes. Here it comes. Lifted in the air to left off the end of the bat for LaCastro. Makes the call and the catch to finish off seven shutout innings from Garrett Cole.
Eastern on Fox. Well, how good has this been so far? One nothing Yankees to the eighth and an Aaron Judge home run. Ryan Stanek comes on for the top of the Yankees order. DJ LeMahieu slaps the first pitch off El Tuve and into right. Extending his on base streak to 26 games with a leadoff single. Like it might have hit the forearm of Altuve as he reached out for it. I'm not sure it hit the glove. Ranged a long way, would have been a difficult play to get the out. Heel of the glove, it looked like. Stanek replacing Christian Javier. Three shutout innings for him. Aaron Judge takes ball one from Stanek. Judge's third inning home run, all the scoring in this game. 21st of the season for the All Star. Yankees looking for some insurance. Cole nearing 100 pitches. The road is Chapman likely coming into the game at some point. Swinging tapper in front of the plate. Stanek throws him out and the scoring position goes to Mayhew. Well, this game is still in the hands of Garrett Cole. There's no question about that. He's in complete command. No drop off in the quality of his stuff. As we talked about earlier, there's no Chad Green. There's no Jonathan Loisega. No reason to try anything else other than at least another inning from Garrett Cole. There's Luke Voigt, who's one for three. The Yankees are now one for 13 with men on base in this game. They're 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Stanek to Voigt. A little bit high, ball one. And again, you're seeing it makes it easier for opposing managers to negotiate this New York lineup through your bullpen usage. Javier did a great job. He's got that good slider, but he did it primarily with fastballs. If you have good right on right relievers, you don't have to match anything up. It's just one right handed hitter after another. You always have the platoon advantage until you get maybe down to Gardner. But teams like the Rays and the Red Sox, who played well against the Yankees, are loaded with those kind of relief pitchers. Well, if the Yankees decide to buy in the trade market, left hand event will be priority. The 1 1 Devoit. Up and Whoa. in. Look out. Ball two. Talked about the baseballs being slick. I think that was a slider that just slipped out of his hand. Yeah, look at the spin on that. Maybe a split actually, because there's very little spin on it. Yeah, it looked like a split. It just slipped out of the hand. Void, who got hit on the hand on Thursday and so sad yesterday out, got hit in the knee last weekend. Saying, my goodness. He is a big target. He so is. there's that. <laughs> But quick on his feet right there. Uh -huh. Two balls, one strike. LeMahieu at second. One gone here in the eighth. Stanek comes home and Voigt fouls it back two and two. 30 years old in his third full major league season. Departs two years in St. Louis. Yankees got him at the deadline in 2018. He hit 14 home runs in those two months after the Yankees got him. In 2019, 21 homers, despite dealing with a core injury for much of the year. Led the majors last year with 22 long balls. And Maldonado wants to talk to Stanek because a split, as dangerous a pitch as it is, is a home run waiting to happen when it's left up in the zone. That's what happened the last two. A quick word from T-Mobile. This year, Major League Baseball is bringing you the T-Mobile Home Run Derby like you've never seen it before. Experience it now at MLB.com slash AR or head to your app store. A 
White, after hitting those major league leading 22 home runs last season, has just three this year in this injury riddled campaign. Missing the first 40 games, coming back for a couple weeks, missing another month with an oblique injury. But getting right again. Look better this week. On a 2 2 from Stanek. And he takes inside on that splitter, and the count goes full. Throw this pitch knowing you have a base open here. Don't want to give in to Luke Voigt. Foul, foul, foul. Staying with that pitch. You're Luke Voigt right now. You just it's tough to rule out fastball when a guy's out there, he's got an upper 90s yeah. fastball. But Stanek seems to be bent on getting him with that split. Opponents this year against his splitter, three for 39. It's a good reason to stay with it. Yeah. Another 3 2 pitch. Fastball taken for ball four. Couple base runners for the Yankees well, the here in the eighth. You. Time for another game break with Kevin Burkhart. What a duo they've got there. Castellanos, Jesse Winker, both starting the All Star game in the outfield for the NL. And the subway right combination. It's the first pair of Reds outfielders to start the All Star game together since 1956. In the American League, you've got Devers and Bogarts, left side of the infield. First time teammates have started the left side of the infield for the AL since Jeter and A Rod. Stanton takes ball one. Walked in the second, 0 for 2 since. Chance after chance for the Yankees in this game to add on. And a 1 0 from Stanek. Stanton takes ball two. Good job by Stanton taking control of the count here. It's a good opportunity for Stanton to just sell out on a fastball. Even if it's not, it's okay. 2 0. Sell out for it. Here it is. It was a fastball, but it missed badly. And Stanton's all over the place. Yeah, that's the key, Joe. Is, is, these are non competitive pitches. Easy for hitters to just rule them out out of hand. Definitely gives Stanton the green light right here. Stanek is just trying to get something over the plate. Stanton who could break it open with one swing on 3 0. He does swing away, but bounces it gently into a double play. And the Yankees' struggles with men on base continue. It stays 1 0 to the bottom of the eighth. Is sponsored by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And by Subway. Eat fresh. Back in Houston in a pitcher's duel. Garrett Cole, seven shutout innings, and back to the mound for the bottom of the eighth. Bottom of the Astros lineup. First one takes off on him. Ball one on Miles Straw. Cole at 98 pitches. He's crossed 100 pitches six times this year. A season high of 111. Huge at bat here because of Straw's speed. A walk could be a double. And it's 2 0. Oh. 
We talked about base runners this year against Cole, six for six stealing bases. This guy's one of the fastest in the league. Cole knows that. He knows how important the first out is anyway in a one nothing game. Even more important with a leadoff batter with speed. He struck out eight. He's walked two. He's home with a 2 0. And his 100th pitch of the night catches a generous outside corner from Corey Blazer. Boy, that's a big call. Wow. Instead of 3 and 0 on straw, 2 and 1. Cole comes back home. That's poked down the line towards the corner and foul. 2 and 2 on straw. Boy, two close calls. The fastball just off the corner where he got the call. And now one down the line. Let's revisit the 2 0 pitch. Could have been a 3 0 count to the leadoff hitter. Give Higashioka credit for pulling that one back in. And this one missed by, okay, four feet maybe. 2-0 two oh to 2-2. Two and two. Slider to the corner for his ninth strikeout tonight. Perfect execution. Really nothing Straw could do right there. All set up by the fastball. This one catches the corner. One away in the eighth. Here's Maldonado. To me, Joe, early in this game, the fastball is what really was carrying Cole through the early innings. And we're seeing him pitch through these last few innings. We've seen change-ups, the slider, the curveball. We've seen a better mix of pitches. That's just so impressive to command multiple pitches third time around the order. Change-up. Top of the zone, one and one. And he's shaking to a lot of these secondary pitches. He's feeling it. That's quickly here. Delivers a 1-1. Back to the heater. Just off of the corner. Two balls, one strike. Luis Sessa and Aroldis Chapman. If, by the way, Garrett Cole goes 1-2-3 in this eighth inning, it would be Aroldis Chapman against Jose Altuve to start the ninth. Two balls, two strikes. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, my goodness. And I think Garrett knows this is his last inning. At 106, he can empty the bucket right here. Anybody gets on, Aaron Boone would have a tough decision to bring Sessa in. Full count on Maldonado. Yeah, good timeout here for Cole walking off the back of the mound because his delivery was a little quick on that changeup right there. Late in the game, fatigue starts being a factor. You need to make a pitch, take a little more time, slow the game down. Takes a breath, nods with the sign, delivers 3-2 in a moment. Boarded there midway through. Same thing, you saw Higashioka set up away. Cole was the one who called time there. He's waiting for Maldonado to get in the box to give the sign. Don't give anything away. 3-2 pitch. Bouncing ball to short. Torres throws him out to God. Well, thank you, know who will take home the Home Run Derby title from Colorado, then enter the T-Mobile Home Run Derby Bracket Challenge and compete to win $100,000 at MLB.com slash bracket. Restrictions apply. See rules. Special delivery out here to Cole, or uh, did 
the Astros checking him? I'm checking the baseball. Huh. I'm not sure whether that was the same ball. Generally, if you hit a ground ball, that ball is going to be tossed out of play. Any mark on a baseball, it's pretty routine, standard routine. To take the ball out of play. But it was an impressive pitch by Garrett Cole. We've seen him staying away. And he shook two sides of the fastball in and tied up Maldonado at 99. I'm telling you, 108 pitches yeah. this deep into a game. And now he sees the finish line directly in front of him. The nine hitter, Robel Garcia. 1 0 eighth inning. Ball in. A little bit inside, ball one. Here, Cole after his shortest outing in five years, failing to get through four against the Mets. Out away from eight shutout frames against the number one offense in baseball. However depleted they are with no Bregman, no Correa. It's been a masterful performance from Cole. Top of the order in El Tuve do next. The 1 1 pitch. It's a chase on a change and it's one and two. Two unhittable sliders and then an unhittable changeup. What do you got next for us, Garrett? Season high 112th pitch. A 1 2. And a 10th strikeout for Garrett Cole to finish off eight shutout innings against the Astros. Ninth inning, and the All Star closer Ryan Presley comes on. That is strike one on Glaber Torres. Home run from Judge way back in the third inning. Eight shot that innings from Garrett Cole tonight. Astros bullpen has done well. Three innings from Javier, an inning from Stanek, and now Presley, who has been the very clear standout at the back end of a bullpen that overall has not been very good. Presley last allowed an earned run in May. Deadline pickup from the Twins in 2018. He's been exceptional for the Astros. That's outside ball two. There you see he's got two really good breaking balls, curveball and slider, and that's how you have to attack Torres right now. You have to hold this game at one, so you're really defending the home run. Presley's 2 1. Hit to the ground at third. There's Toro. And Torres, the first out of the ninth. So here's Garrett Cole going down into the Yankees' dugout after the eight shutout innings. A couple pats on the shoulder and nondescript. And the reason that I bring this up, Tom, and we take a look at this is because Oldis Chapman has taken a seat. Yes, what's important about that footage we just saw there was that there were no conversations with Gary. Right. I know how you're doing. Hey, nice job. Certainly no handshakes. Tells me the game is still in his hands. Urshela lifts it foul. His previous season high was 111. He's thrown 112 through eight. So you got to figure to finish this game, and he's going to get over 120 probably. You do have the All Star break coming up. An opportunity to give him extra days if you want to before the next start. I think if you have a Chapman who's on point throwing the ball well, it's an easy decision to give him the ball. It's made harder because he's been working through mechanical issues. And right now, you'd have to say Garrett Cole is a better option approaching 120 pitches for the ninth inning. And then it rolled his Chapman. Especially in a 1 0 game. Yeah. And it rolled his Chapman, who obviously one of the great closers of this generation, was looking like that guy over the first two months this year. Foul and it's two and two. Chapman gave up one earned run over his first 23 games. 
Over his last 10, his ERA is just below 19. Three blown, three blown leads, three losses in that time. And they've tried everything from mechanics to pitch selection, changing up his routine. He's dealt with a torn fingernail, and he's dealing with what every pitcher's dealing with, and that is trying to find a way to grip the baseball. Well, they're on the bullpen phone right now. That's back to Presley. Two up, two down. So for Chapman, since starting the year, almost perfect. He's blown four saves since May 23rd. May 23rd against Chicago, the first one that he blew. Then again in Minnesota, June 10th. Blew one against Kansas City. Grand slam that he gave up to Jared Walsh on June 30th, and then against the Mets on the 4th of July. And that phone call was to get him up and ready. Now we'll see whether that means in. And again, it's the top of the order for the Astros. Altuve, Brantley, Guriel do up. And Chapman's issues have related to fastball command. When his fastball is down, it's much easier to hit. And to me, he's throwing the slider a lot more, and his slider is not a good enough pitch for him to get away with throwing as much as he does. That was the home run that Jared Walsh hit. It's great as a changeup sort of pitch from the fastball, but he's run away from his fastball a little bit because the command isn't there and overexposing the slider. You don't want to give hitters too many looks at that slider because the metrics of it don't work out to be a great pitch. And that was the pitch, the slider that Altuve hit for the pennant winning home run in 2019. One other note on Cole, Tom, his career high is 118. That was in the division series in 2019. You're high in a regular season game 116. Kenny? To me, guys, this is why you pay Garrett Cole the money. And I know we talk about pitch counts all the time, but take a step back. This game, this series is too important to the Yankees. I don't think they can take the chance with going to Chapman. Cole showing early no signs of tiring. One, two, three in the eighth. Struck out two in that inning. Still running it up for 90s. He's touched 100. Kenny said it. This is more than just a, a chance to win a series. So he's at a point where the season's kind of teetering. They've won four of five. A few weeks from the deadline. Who are they? Where are they at? A 2 2 from Presley. Looking for a 1 2 3 9. Gardner will see to that not happening. Serving a base hit the other way. And to your point, Joe, I think Aaron Boone showed you last night how important this series is by extending Chad Green. This is the right thing to do, but that was a 4 0 game, knowing that he would not be available today. And you can do that because you're expecting length from Garrett Cole, but no Lewisaga, no Green. You knew that going in. I think in a perfect world, you would have found a little softer landing for Rodas exactly. Chapman as he tries to work his way back. Yeah, I get much more pressure packed in a July game than what he's about to face if indeed they do go to him. And he kept the line for Higashioka. Both two of the walk. And down 0 1. Well, it's so much harder for closers to work through mechanical issues than starting pitchers. Starting pitchers, you know you have free runway of four or five days between starts to really work on some things. For a closer, you know, sort of like the Yankees did with Chapman, you just basically take him out of high leverage spots for a week so he can work through those mechanics. He did come into a game in Seattle that was one-sided. And in that series, it was Green who got the high leverage end game. And as a reflection of how much he was working on stuff, velocity was way down. You're used to seeing 100 plus from Chapman. He was mid 90s for a lot of that outing in Seattle. Presley deals 1 1. Here's a snap throw to first, not in time. Down goes to 1 and 2 on Higashioka.
And let's give Dusty Baker credit for the way he's run this game as well, running his best relievers out there to keep the game at one. And again, the right-handed, the parade of right-handed relievers against New York. Javier Stanek, Presley. Able to squeeze that one. Uh, they said that it hit the ground first. So do the one two again. It was close, but umpires will listen as well as try to see this. And yep, it did hit the ground. I'll tell you what, though, Tom, if the Yankees are unable to close this thing down in the ninth inning, they're going to look and see chance after chance gone by the wayside. One for 14 with men on base today. It's been a season long problem. You mentioned when they hit home runs, 70% of the time it's bases empty. And sometimes finding a single at the right time, also hard to find for New York. Had a base runner in seven of the nine innings in this game. But just the judge home run in the third to produce a run. Another one two from Presley. He gets a swing and a miss. Ends the inning. Fasten those seatbelts to the ninth inning we go. The bottom of the ninth with the top of the order coming up. Will it be Cole? Will it be Chapman? In the second year of his nine year and $324 million contract, a record for a pitcher. To the ninth inning he goes, having already thrown his season high 112 pitches. Chapman's ready. Top of the order comes up. Jose Altuve leads it off. Swings away and lines a base hit into center field. One pitch and the tying runner is aboard. And now it's really decision time for Aaron Boone. Cole back in the stretch now at 113 pitches. But again, Chapman, especially his ability to throw strikes, is in question. Just the third hit of the game against Garrett Cole. Now it's Michael Brantley. Strike one. does not have a big lead at first base. Astros the number one offense in baseball on the season. Shut out yesterday. Shut out through eight innings today. El Tuve at first. The one one pitch. Crack foul and it's one and two. 99 from Cole here in the nine. They had been 0 for 12 as Brantley is right now. Unusual to see Michael in any kind of a slump. Let's see if Garrett stays with fastball and he's got one more 100 left in him. The one two. Over the changeup. It's been a good pitch for him in these later innings. He doubled up on changeups to Garcia to get the strikeout last inning. This one was a little up, though. Ideally, he wants that down further. Gave Brantley a chance. Derek Cole perhaps looking for his first nine inning complete game since 2018. Brings another one, too. Good take by Brantley in the count evens up. Well, he found 99. Wasn't quite 100, but this guy is digging deep right now. He has now matched his career high for pitchers in a game. The division series in 2019. 
Tying run at first. Winning run at the plate in the form of the All-Star Brantley. 2-2. Fouled off. That was a well-executed slider, the first one Brantley had seen. One of the best two-strike hitters on the best two-strike hitting team. Against a pitcher that is as good as anybody at finishing you off. Another 2-2 from Garrett Cole. Off the hands. Another foul ball. Next pitch will be number 121 for Cole. And with every pitch he throws, that man right there, Aaron Boone, gets a little more anxious. These foul balls take a toll. When you are this deep into a game, having to execute at a high level, pitch after pitch. No pitcher has thrown more than 126 in a game this year. The eighth one to Brantley after a toss over to check on Altuve. That's just a reminder he knows Altuve is there. Altuve could get a jump here because Cole has really been concentrating on Brantley. The eighth pitch, full count. After Brantley, it's Guriel. Brantley's got to be looking fastball right here. There goes Altuve on another foul ball. 99 fouled straight back, and it stays three and two. Yeah, to me, the bag is there for Altuve. Extend his jump a little more. I mean, his lead a little more. That was a good jump. Cole's got all his energies toward the plate. There's no way he's slide stepping. He's got to put everything into this pitch. And the reason I expect fastball is because it's Cole's best pitch, number one. Doesn't want to lose on something else. But the changeup has not been there the last two pitches. Runs again in the air to center field. Brad Gardner runs under it for the first out of the nine. On the 10th pitch, Cole gets Brantley. Is it 123 as Guriel strides to the plate? Aaron Boone not budging yet. These two teams who have played so many riveting games through the years. Championship Series in 17, Championship Series in 19. As riveting of a regular season game as you will ever watch. Let's acknowledge what Cole just did. He threw 99 and got the out on his 123rd pitch. His first one to Yuli Gurriel is hit in the air, foul strike one. Well, you talked about it. Typically through his outings, the velocity has stayed up and even gone up. But into uncharted territory here, 124 pitches. Six more than in any start in his nine-year major league career. I can tell you he stayed within his delivery, but I can also tell you this is willpower. Sheer willpower. Home of the 0-1, Guriel. Fouls it back and it's 0-2. 99 like it's nothing. And remember, we've talked about Guriel being a great right-on-right -right breaking ball hitter. And did get a base hit. One of the hits off Cole off the slider. See if he stays fastball throughout this sequence here. I would say yes. I don't see Guriel timing it quite yet.
The 0 2. He went around, strike three. Home plate umpire Corey Blazer makes the call himself. The 11th K for Garrett Cole. That's just what really chaps the hitter here is when the home plate umpire makes the call. Watch the barrel of the bat. That's not a swing, folks. And I can tell you the line of demarcation for base umpires is the foul line. If you see the barrel of the bat cross the foul line, then you make the call. But in this case, it was the home plate umpire. Look at Garrett Cole arguing to stay in. And he will. Aaron Boone had Chapman ready for Alvarez. Remember Alvarez with two home runs off Cole back in May. And Garrett Cole talked his way into staying in this game at 126 pitches. He's pitched like an ace today, and now he handles his visit like an ace. This is his game. And he's saying nobody's taking it from him. Aaron Boone did not have an option at that point. There's no way you're taking the ball out of that man's hands. Astros down to their last out. Jordan Alvarez, two home runs against Garrett Cole back in May. The first one. Strike one, fouled in back 98. has now thrown more pitches than any pitcher in a game this season. Altuve singled on the first pitch of the nine. Brantley flied out on the 10th pitch of his at bat. Cole strikes out Guriel and now deals in a one to Alvarez. Strike two with a fastball at 99. The look of determination and the stuff of determination. This entire inning, fastballs 98 99. Does he have one more left? Derek Cole goes the distance. 99 on the last pitch of the night. You will not see a better pitching performance in terms of stuff and in terms of willpower. After Aaron Boone had his mind made up to get him out of the game and match up Chapman on Alvarez, Garrett Cole told him no way and went to three consecutive fastballs to blow away Alvarez approaching 130 pitches. You can watch this game for years and not see a finish like that one. Most since Mike Fires threw 131 in 2019. A complete game for Garrett Cole. His first nine inning complete game since 2018. One nothing. The final score. Aaron Judge's third inning home run. Stands up as the winner for the Yankees. Coming up next, we'll get you to the studio for post-game coverage right after these messages.